All right, so in this one, we're gonna update our search function to actually work. Right now, it's very simple if I do try or something like new item, and if I don't click on the actual item itself and hit submit, it takes me to this blog list and it says not found. So first of all, we wanna actually update our blog so that URL to work correctly. So let's go into app config, and it's really, really simple. I'm just gonna add one more line here and get rid of the ID part and also that trailing slash. The trailing slash is not necessary, but I will get rid of it. And I'm just gonna put blog list here and we'll see what happens with that. We refresh and now we've got our blog list actually showing up. Notice we still have that, that actual parameter that's coming through so we can handle that with no problem in just a moment. But that's essentially it. That's now on our homepage. So if I click on the homepage, it does take me to the homepage. And if I click on the blog, it shows me the blog. So either way, that's gonna actually show up. So this would allow you to actually change your homepage to something different if you'd like, um, or just get rid of the blog list. But either way, we're probably gonna wanna have the blog list here because if we go to a blog item, which we'll get rid of that too, but if we go to a blog item, notice how the URL works. If I intuitively, because users do this sometimes, intuitively just get rid of that, it will bring me back here. That's the ideal situation. Now, if you don't want the blog itself to be bringing you back there, you can actually force a redirect quite simply with redirect to. Notice it says redirect to and we'll refresh in here and now it goes back to where we wanted it. So of course you could do that same thing with this home page, but I'm gonna leave it without the redirect. I'm just gonna leave it as the blog list because that's what we want. And then also the other part of it with this search, so new item, if I do that search, click search, um, then I'll actually be able to have um, the actual parameters there. But if I did it with that redirect, the parameters might not stay. So it's not something I'm gonna test, but it is something to note. Now what I wanna do is actually get that Q parameter. Now I set it as Q in the nav. So let's go in the try nav and we see that we have this ng submit and we didn't actually set a name for the input but actually look in the directive itself we set the queue right here that's just generally what you'll see for searches you'll see it as queue standing for query uh, but that's generally what you'll see i'm going to go ahead and comment these console logs out too uh, but on most sites you'll often see that queue you might see something different you might even see query so query completely written out but we're just gonna leave it as Q for query to kind of represent what that actually is. Now, what we wanna do is in our blog list, so wherever we're doing that query to, so if I actually created a search component, which I have not done, but if I did create a search component, you would be doing this same sort of thing. You would want to actually get the items themselves. And it comes from that same idea of search. So we had location path search, so search is allowing us to actually look for a parameter. So we can actually go into that actual blog list component and I can do console.log and we'll just do location.search parentheses and that's it. So if I save that, go back in our blog list, notice I still have that queue in there, refresh and go to the inspect element, console, we get this object here and I can see that Q stands for new item. Cool, so now that we have that, we can actually set a variable equal to location.search.q. So q being this right here, so this actual key itself. If there is no q, let's actually just console, oops, we want to call this var q. We'll console log q now instead of the whole thing. So we'll save that, refresh, and now it says new item. Now, of course, if there was no queue, so if I got rid of all of those things, it would just be empty. Um, so it's actually, uh, it, it's, it's just an empty string and there's actually nothing there. So what I wanna do here is I wanna actually update my search results based off of this queue. But I can do it a little bit smarter. So if I go to blog list, remember how we actually have a query. We have a search function built into it already. So if I searched new item here, it's actually gonna only show me the things that are related to that search. So we can dynamically do that same sort of idea with using that model. So let's go ahead and use that ng model back into the blog list 
and we'll say if q, then we'll say scope.query equals to q, this q right there. So we refresh in here, and now I'm gonna do new item and hit submit. Q is coming through here. Now this has been filled out for us. If I get rid of this, it doesn't fill out anything for us. It doesn't actually remove anything, but the new item is definitely the thing that was searched there. Okay, so that's actually allowing us to do that in particular, which is nice, but maybe for instance, we don't want it to say blog list anymore. Maybe we want it to say results now. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll say scope.results shown or let's just say search query equals to true so we're setting that there's a query equaling to true and since i'm setting that there's going to be one being true i also want to set one being false and i'm going to do that in this watch down here and all i'm going to do now is put another if statement in here and we'll say if scope dot query equals to q equals equals to q so if it is q then we're gonna say false. And in fact, we want it not equal to a Q. So if the query changes, basically, then it's no longer a search query, it's now doing that general, uh, or at least it's not the, t the standard search query, it's now going off of that filter. So let's go back into our blog list. And now what I'm gonna do here is I'll just say ng show or ng hide if there's a search query. So search query, and that's gonna give us that H1 tag. And then I'll just come right below that and do ng show. And we'll do results for query or Q. Doesn't matter, but in our case, we're going to use query. And now it says results for new item. So it looks like it's more of a search. It's a little bit more dynamic as to what a search might look like. So again, we do new item and hit submit. It takes us here, it gives us that search. And that doesn't actually matter where we are. So if I go here and search again, it will bring me right back. Now that search box is still for some reason coming through like that. And it's real simple as to why, because in our scope search item, we actually don't reset the search query itself. We did it with the selected item, but not the search item. So come back, refresh. Now we do new item, hit submit, goes away, search results coming through and our other part is still working as well. Cool, so now what I wanna do is actually just get rid of some of these things. Like when I click on this, I don't need confirm any longer. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that and let's go into our actual blog list itself and we're gonna change how the link is done. So this is the old link. I will copy it and leave the old link for you guys as reference. Of course, hopefully by now you won't need it. And now I'm just gonna get rid of all of this other stuff and then did do nghref being blog slash and then post.id. Save that, refresh. Now if I click on it, it takes me there. I also want that link to go on my image as well, as well as my title. So a lot of times in blogs, that's what you'll see. You'll see it on the title, you'll see it on the image, you see it on all sorts of places, just to make it nice and easy on our users to get where they wanna go. All right, so now I click on it, uh, it looks a little funny with the image. I think it's because of, it's possible because of that space that we put there, uh, but it's also possible because of the class that's not on the image. So we'll just do class image dash responsive. Uh, this is a bootstrap class. We're gonna go ahead and save that. Refresh, uh, that image is still not really looking great. So uh, I'm gonna leave it as for now, get rid of the spacing around it. That might help solve it. Nope, doesn't. Okay. Um, oh, I know why, exactly. It's because of our AREF. We have classes on it, there it is. Let's get rid of those classes. And that last slash, that should not be there. All right, cool. There it goes. Well, we fixed some issues anyway as far as responsive is concerned. Cool, so now we've got our image, we've got all that stuff. If I click on it, it's now showing this a little bit better. On our blog post itself, we do want to have the image show up. So let's go ahead and look at that detail. And I will put it right above our description. So I'll say image source equals to post.image. And this should be ng source. And then we'll do class equals to image dash responsive. 
responsive. There it goes. Refresh, now the image is showing up there. Go ahead and put in a break tag. Um, I will put in a span in here too, and we'll say ng if, and I'm gonna say post.image. So this will show if the image is actually in existence. Close off that span, refresh there. So we actually do have that image coming through. That's good. All right, we probably would want this same sort of idea um, in the blog list as well. So I'm gonna come back and just put it in where the image is. Get rid of the break tag, get rid of the other image. In fact, we probably can put, get rid of the span tag as well. Put this on the href tag instead. There we go. Because if the image is not there, we don't want to show a broken image. We don't want to show any space for it. Okay, so that's starting to look better. Uh, we also don't need the, the two delete functions. We just need the one. So I'm gonna just leave the confirm one. And instead of delete, I will have it say just X. So we'll just say X instead of confirm. And then I'll get rid of that delete line. Save that, refresh. There we go. So if I can actually select X. And actually, I'm gonna make it a little button. So I'll say class BTN, BTN-SM for small. And we'll do BTN default. Save that, refresh, there we go. Nice little button there for the comments itself. That filter comment, I'm gonna go ahead and put a break tag as well. In fact, I, I do wanna only show the comments themselves and the filter if comments even exist, right? So if there is even comments. So what I'm gonna do on this row is I'll say ng if comments exist or ng show, let's say ng show if comments exist. And then that's gonna say the same thing about the UI element. This is not gonna matter as, or excuse me, the UL element. It's not gonna matter as much, but we will put it there. It's just some user interface sort of stuff. So let's go into our actual component for the blog detail. And this is where we're actually gonna update our comments themselves. So like reset reply, a lot of this stuff has to do with the comments actually working, right? So if the comments are even in there, but what I'm gonna do here is inside of this for each function where we have the scope posts, I'm gonna set a new scope for comments. So I'll do scope.comments equals to post.comments. And then I'll say if scope.comments, then I'll do the scope comments exist equaling to true. That should be there. Okay. Otherwise, I will put comments exist equaling to false above the query. Right where we put not found. Okay. There we go. And we refresh in here. Comments exist. Still working. Um, but I do want to change how the details coming through instead of post.comments, we're just going to use comments. There we go. Refresh, comments are still showing up. Let's go back to our another one where comments do not exist. And we see that the filter no longer shows up. So go into console, I get the length of undefined. So this is probably related to comments, but it says it's in blog detail components. So add reset reply. Um, so let's go and look at that blog detail component. We've got this right here. So again, we want to use comments instead of uh, the other one. So this is scope.comments now. And we're gonna do the same thing with the add reply. So just comments. So I'm changing all the scope.comments to sco or scope.post.comments to scope.comments. That's what I want to do. And because now we're using it right here. And if the comments don't exist, we're just gonna put an empty array. So now I refresh, still getting this error, property cannot read length of undefined. So we've got our comments here, we actually did define it, but we actually defined it twice. Post.comments might mean undefined itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this scope here, paste that in, and just cut this out 
paste it in there. That should actually solve the problem because if our um, server is actually not sending even an empty array, we wanna see something like this. More than likely your server would send an empty array. It wouldn't have one with a full array and one without an array. Like it's either gonna send an empty array or a full array. It's not gonna send nothing. But the way we have our JSON set up, this is actually what we'll have to do. And that's where you come to testing and trying different things out. So let's try it again, refresh now that error is gone. And also that filter box is still there missing. And I'll say hello there. Um, oops, we'll just say hello th there. It appears that it's not actually coming through on to our list items themselves. So let's take a look. And it actually is there, but common exists does not show. So what I'm gonna do instead in the blog detail, instead of this, we'll just say comments.length greater than zero. And we'll do that same sort of thing here as well. Um, so we can actually get rid of that other clause. This is where, again, testing comes back and forth. We can just get rid of this. It's no longer needed. Comments exist. That should be it. Refresh. And now we say hello there. Hit submit. Now our comments are showing up as well as our filter. Perfect. Okay, so it looks like we've got so much stuff already done. This is a very robust sort of blog. Um, there's definitely things that we can improve upon here. But as far as setting up Angular and hopefully now you have enough skills to build all the other sort of functions that you might want. Um, you might not have those skills yet, and that's why we're gonna continue making more projects. If you have any questions on this one, let us know. Otherwise, we will see you in the next one.